have got a full serving of game action on the way tonight with Fredericktown trying to keep their postseason hopes alive as they tango with Cardington Lincoln with their mindset on trying to sink the Pirates here at home on senior night. It's live and free week nine high school football and you'll only find it on the OH Report. Filling up your pupils and eardrums next. Receiver coming from the Shelby Whippets, Isaiah Ramsey. He's caught our attention over here, and we're certainly going to keep an eye on the Willard Flashes. We will see you next week on the Stat Leaders Brought to you by Spencer of Mansfield. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your health care partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart. You're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. What's up, America? Brian Skaronski here. And if you want to see me and the gang chop it up with some unintelligent conversation, we've got the show for you. Check out the OH Report video podcast every Monday, exclusively right here on the OH Report.
Good evening, folks, and welcome inside the Park National Bank pregame here at the home of the Freddies for a K-Mac clash between Cardington Lincoln and Fredericktown, playing a home for the final time this season. Alongside Garrett G-Man Parlett, I am Brian Skaronsky, and got a fun matchup here on hand. G-Man, it's always a priceless experience for these 14 Freddy athletes senior night. It's a night unlike any other for these 12th graders. You only get to live it once, so you may as well enjoy the squeeze while it's here. Yeah, you got to be able to enjoy this night because you got to be able to walk out here with a win. You don't want to lose on senior night. I mean, it'll hang with you forever. You know, I still remember my days back to my senior night win. It hangs with you for a very long time. You got to come out on senior night and get a big win. And that's what these Freddies are looking to do here at home. Let's talk more about the Freddies who still mathematically, they're in the title race and chase for the KMAC. Of course, they got a win tonight, and they've got the big game looming large next week against Centerburg, who they would need to lose, of course, tonight to stay alive. But realistically, I think this is a team that just has their eyes set on winning out, trying to improve their playoff standings. They're a solid team from top to bottom, though. And they got a chance here to improve their improve their record. You know, can continue to stack up some of these games. They they won last week against, you know, East Knox. They and they move on next week after this one to take on you know their rival from play for the Freddie Burke tro Trophy. So uh, I, I think you mentioned it, Brian. Right now, just focusing on one game at a time, trying to improve. You know, the season that they've had so far. As you see them coming out ripping through the paper. And for this Freddy squad, they're kind of led by a couple of different guys, but I think you could say that Tegan Rule is the dude around here. It is senior night for him, of course, and this is a guy that he shows out, man, on, on a regular basis, looking for him to have a big, solid night tonight, probably get up to 1,500 yards with a key performance. Uh, he, he tends to be the, you know, the driving force of this offense and the defense especially, too. He, he does it on both sides of the field. Tegan is a heck of a player, and if they want any time, any kind of you know, big win here tonight, a lot of it's going to go through him, especially on the offensive side running the football. Now let's talk about Cardington Lincoln. It's been a little bit of a rocky ride for them so far this season during the one and seven start. Losers in their last five, so they've definitely they faced some choppy water here on this journey, G-Man, but... On any given night, anything can happen, man. You're definitely not going to count yourselves out. Especially coming in here on the road. You know, no, nobody's counting them to, to be in this game, to have a chance to win this. But, you know, Fredericktown, they're expected to come out here and dominate this game. But it, how much would it mean to some of these guys on this Pirates team to, you know, come in here and upset them on senior night right. on the road? I mean, that, that's got to be the driving force. That's got to be the bulletin board material in the locker room. That's kind of got them going throughout the week. So, so we'll see if they can do something here coming out. But Fredericktown, Looks like they're going to receive this kickoff here. Yeah, I believe that uh, Cornington Lincoln won the toss and elected to defer in kind of the the new wave is uh, to kick it away as the Freddies are going to get the football. And we talked about Tinkin Rule already and, and what this guy is able to do. Looking forward to seeing him in action for the first time with my own eyes here tonight as Cardington Lincoln's got it teed up. Ready to kick it away here under the lights in Freddy Country. And you can tell that fall has officially set in, not just because the trees and the surroundings out here, but because it's basically dark here for the start of kickoff. That's how you know that it's almost playoff time. Yeah, you, you know, beginning of the season, you still got the sun up. It's still a little bit warm now. You know, everyone's put on the winter coats. You see the long sleeves out on the field. The weather is going to begin to become a factor. And, you know, some of, those hard, some of those hard hits, you know, when it's a little bit colder, you feel them a little bit longer, and they bruise a little bit too easy. We are underway as that'll wrap up our Park National Bank pregame. As the Freddies with a big return here out of the gate. They're going to be set up with some solid field position out across the 45-yard line. That's exactly what you want at home on homecoming night. Or I'm sorry, on senior night is just to, to start with some solid field position, see if you can build on it from here. And yeah, not the start you want to if you're carding to Lincoln. Don't want to give, you know, this offense and great field position here early in this one. You want to come out here and try to get a stop, but this will not help their cases as now. Fredericktown set up in great field position. Already almost crossed midfield. Here's Mass turns handoff. This is going to be rule. And he's going to be slung down almost immediately. No room for him to run that time as Wyatt Denny got a piece of him and Here's the starting lineup tonight for the Fredericktown offense. Mass is the quarterback. Got Rule, of course, in the backfield. Hoflich will lead the way. Cade Carpenter, the top wide out around here. And then a very solid offensive front 
all the way across. On second down, here's Tegan with a big crease this time, and Rules got enough for a Frederick down. First down. Great blocking up front right there on that right side. Rule able to exploit the defense, find the open gap, and he does the rest. Almost made a defender miss. He would have been out to the house, but Carnington at least able to make that open field tackle. It's now first down Freddy's here in great field position. Come out I formation again here. First down in enemy territory. And they'll hand it off straight up the middle. I believe this is Hoflich. Pretty nice gain there for the fullback. They'll say about eight yards with the pickup. You know, it's sometimes now in football hard to find, you know, those old school full, fullbacks, those old school uh, formations where, you know, they're still lining up in the eye and kind of just running it down your throat. And this is kind of that offense that loves to do so. The fullback back there, he's always lead blocking for Rule and giving Rule the spotlight. But on that play, it'll be a good gain. And now he's lead blocking again as Rule gets a couple on that one. That'll be enough for a North Central State College first down as they'll move the chains. And we'll take a look here on our CES Credit Union replay. Decent lead blocking up front. Just a little stutter step and rule. Able to keep the chain gang on the move. First down from the gun this time. Bring Carpenter in motion. He's got the give to the outside, makes a cut. And he's going to get slung down inside the 15. Another nice gain as this Fredericktown offense staying on the move, G-Man. Yeah, and he, he, he gets a lot of handoffs, you know, at the wide receiver position, whether it's Jed lining up up in the backfield. He, he's an athlete. You know, he'll be all over the field here tonight for Fredericktown. I expect him to get the ball out and maybe in the screen game as well as in the backfield as a runner. So it'll be second down and short. Freddie's looking to get on the board. And it's going to be Rule powering his way straight ahead. Just kept the legs a churning. And that's going to be enough for another North Central State College. First down. It hasn't been anything crazy on this drive, Chili. Just been, you know, these inside gives to Rule and able to follow his fullback, able to follow his offensive line, find those open creases, and make something out of his Fredericktown now knocking on the doorstep of the Pirates. Break the huddle with the ball at the eight-yard line. Two receivers to the right. It's going to be Carpenter in the slot. They'll move him in motion, give it to Rule. Opposite side, makes a move, and throws a stiff arm. He's in there. Touchdown, Freddies. I like the play design right there. A couple fakes, and then, of course, get it to your star running back and Rule, and he does the rest, making a couple Pirates look silly out in the open field with a stiff arm, finding that pylon. Touchdown, Freddies here early. Take one more look on the CES Credit Union replay. That's just Tegan Rule. Ruling the defense as he goes in with a nice stiff arm. And a nice collection of the student section back there, dressed in pink. Got on some cowboy hats too, G. It's a pretty groovy look. Never thought I would see, you know, the pink and the cowboy hat, but hey. It works. Let it fly. So the kick is up and through. That's going to extend the Frederick Town lead to 7-0. We'll take a quick timeout. We'll be right back. Freddy's with a solid opening drive on senior night. At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. It is seven nothing here in Freddie Country as Fredericktown scoring on their opening drive of the contest. I'm Brian Skrowski, Garrett Parlett with me here tonight. Game action going down. 
Freddies looking for their sixth consecutive victory while the Pirates in danger of losing for the sixth straight week and hasn't been great for them so far on the campaign. However, they've gotten some decent production out of the quarterback position in Caden Beach. He won't blow you away in terms of big numbers, but he also, he won't kill you either, G. He, he's, a, he's a pretty steady mover, and he runs the offense pretty well. He's been a solid captain of the ship. You see a handoff here to the running back. Not going to really materialize to a lot, but you know he's the captain of the ship back there. It's just been on rocky waters all year so far for the Pirates. They've been up and down, haven't had the, you know, the year that they've wanted to, and just not not able to get the ball in the playmakers' hands, and it's just been it's been a tough start for them. And you know, closing the season, they got a chance here on senior night to kind of upset Fredericktown here on the road. Let's see if maybe you know that gives them a jolt, gives them some uh, some 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 mojo to come in here and get a big win. We'll see. Second down, and we've got some movement up front. I believe this is going to go against the Freddies. It will so make things a little bit easier, more manageable for Cardington on their opening drive and. I think it's always, you know, such a bonus for a team that's struggling to just pick up a first down early in the contest. And they're going to do just that as they've got the hookup right here. And Pirates going to move the chains with Briggs, making the snag his favorite target of Beach this season. You mentioned it, Brian. Just to come out here and, you know, settle down. I know they let up the first touchdown, you know, pretty relatively easy for Fredericktown. They able to get down there and score, but... This offense got to come out here and kind of just settle stuff down, you know, relax. Come down here, get a first down, get a couple first downs, at least play the field position game if you're not able to score. But, you know, you'd love to get some points here on this opening drive. It's a North Central State College first down as they bring Donaldson in motion and just pound it forward. Ashton Plowman trying the right side and eating up about five yards here. So the Pirates off to a pretty decent start here offensively. Already at midfield. Two back-to-back -back plays where they're gaining, you know, positive chunk plays. That one on first down is going to set up about a second and five. So, you know, you got to stay ahead of the change. You, you want to be able to get a good gain on first down so you're not, you know, battling yourself on first and 15s, first and 13s. Want to get a solid positive gain they have. Let's see if they continue to do so here. It's, I think that's going to result in a first down here for the Pirates. Yeah, no question about it. Six-yard pickup. So, Cardington, the offense. Doing some things here as back-to-back -back run plays trying that right side and equal success on both Wyatt Denny this time with a gain of six. So from the 44, Pirates break the huddle. Three receivers, three men in the backfield, stack backs, and they'll hand it off. Run to the near side here with Denny. And he's going to get inside of the 40-yard line. So it seems like just about every time they're running it, they're picking up six yards. G, you'll take that. Yeah, you'll take that any day of the week. And great start here for the offense so far for the Pirates. You know, it's been pretty solid chunk plays on first down, staying ahead of the sticks. And once again on first down, able to get a solid run this time from Denny. That's going to bring an easy second and manageable. That's exactly what you want to be here for the Pirates. Freddy's march right down the field on the opening offensive drive of the game. Pirates looking to answer right here. Two receivers to the top of your screen, but they'll hand it again to Denny. And he's got plenty enough for another North Central State College first down. As the Pirate ship coasting along, man, finding some smooth sailing out there. This is exactly how you want to start a game if you're carding to Lincoln, especially on offense. I know defense, they weren't able to get the stop you know, on that opening Possession for the Freddies, but driving it pretty well, chewing up some clock to them, beginning to control some time of possession, getting your defense, you know, a rest, some water, get their legs back underneath them as we'll see if maybe the offense can come down here and get a seven. Trips to the near side here. They'll bring a man from left to right. It's Narlson. But it's going to be a five-yard flag going against Cardington. And sometimes you see this G-man where a lot of good rhythm, you're moving the football, and then all of a sudden a flag will disrupt that. But Pirates just going to go right back up to the line of scrimmage and run the same play. Straight back to pass. Beach down the middle, nearly intercepted. 
Man, in and out of the hands that time of Logan Small. So it'll be second down. And here's another look. Beach just has a couple of giveaways so far in the passing game this year. But, man, oh, man, <laughs> nearly did right here. Mm. Great defense there from Fredericton, jumping that route. I um, was kind of expecting maybe, you know, a play action, Brian. They've been killing him throughout the run game. Maybe see if you get some of those linebackers, you know, to, you know, bite, suck in, and then be able to hit somebody over the top. But we we'll see what they like to go here on second and long. They'll toss it here to the near side. Plenty of space formulating. And Aiden Plowman keeping his legs driving forward. He's got the penalty yardage and a whole lot more back. I think he got about 13 yards on the gain. Just solid running here down the near sideline. Wouldn't go out of bounds, and I think he picked up about five extra yards as a result. This Pirates rushing attack so far has been pretty smooth. No tackles for loss. I mean, they, they've been getting positive chunk plays every single time they've been able to run the ball. Now third and short, that, that first down false start hasn't come back to hurt them. We'll see if they can convert here on third down. 4.40 to go on a moving clock in the opening quarter straight ahead. And I think he's going to have enough to move the sticks yet again. So the running attack right now for the Pirates. It's keeping the ship on the move as they're to the red zone. Marked down at the 20-yard line. And another pickup of four yards. And you got, you got to you know, give the respect to the offensive line. They're moving bodies up there. You know, they're creating gaps for these, for these running backs. They use a multitude of them so far here early. They've been able to go outside, inside, wherever they want to go. They've been able to run there and get great positive chunk plays out of it. Let's see if they continue to stay on the ground. Beach tosses it. Ball nearly comes loose from Plowman. And now it is. <laughs> Fredericktown certainly feels like they've come up with the football. And they have G-Man. What a big play right there. Got to take another look at it. Just looked like some butter fingers here from Ashton. Yeah, he had multiple multiple chances to get it back, but eventually just out of his grabs, and you see Fredericktown fall right on it. Is Wow, what a momentum killer. If Cardington Lincoln was driving down to tie this game up. They had a chance, you know, to get right back, back into this game, and just a play like that can completely, you know, flip the switch of a game, and now Fredericktown, they got all the momentum. See if they can drive down here, make this a two-score game. Come out with the pro set. Rule straight ahead, big gaping hole, Tegan Rule. Just a couple of men to get by, and you see the speed kiss him goodbye to the crib. 77 yards, and the Freddies waste no time. It's that two-score advantage you were just talking about. Man, they made it look easy. I mean, Tegan Rule, this dude's skill set is absolutely incredible. I thought he was going to get caught, Brian, but he, it seemed like he was just moving in slow motion. A little bit of a quick hesitation throughout the stiff arm, and he was just absolutely gone. Nobody was catching him. And, and look at that. Flip of the switch, completely different ball game. Carding to Lincoln had the opportunity to go down there and tie. They cough it up, and now Fredericktown here already up 13-0, pinning the PAT. Rule already over 100 yards on the night. That's how you start senior night with a bang right there, ladies and gents. Freddie's tack on the PAT. Another look here at that touchdown run. This is just a thing of beauty and basically all just individual one-two. How many tackles does he you know, force a miss out of? Right here, the stiff arm with a little hesitation and then nobody's catching him. What a run from Roland. You know, my key to the game, Brian, for Cardington Lincoln was to keep Rule under 100 yards. We're not even, <laughs> <laughs> what are we not even, you know, nine minutes into this game, and he's already over 100. So not the recipe for the Pirates here on Friday night. All right, here we go. So for me, too, don't sink your own ship. Uh, that didn't go so well on the previous drive, of course, as they come away with the fumble that easily could have been collected. Don't let Tegan rule. Um, he's doing quite well. Uh, why not tonight, though? So that one still not out of the realm of possibilities. You got to think how, how, how much this game would have changed if Cardington Lincoln was able to go down there and score that, that first possession and, and not turn it over. 
you know, would have obviously helped them in the scoring category. It would have been a much closer game, but it would have helped these guys, you know, just get their legs underneath them, you know, say that we can compete with these guys is now on the kickoff return. They'll get a decent gain out, out of past the 30. They were at least able to move the ball in their previous possession was Cardington Lincoln before disaster struck. The running game for them, producing basically all the yards minus the one completed pass by Caden Beach. So at least you've got a mini blueprint for the bulk majority of one drive where you were able to move the football. See if it works out for him here as the Freddies this time bring a little bit of heat, a couple of linebackers on the way. But it's going to be Wyatt Denny slung down after he was able to gain maybe three on the play. So second down and obviously a key spot here for both units. If you're Cardington, you've already seen what Fredericktown's able to do and they've got that big home run hitter in the backfield wearing number 19. So you got to keep pace with them offensively. Got to go score, but for Fredericktown, Wow, what, what a big possession this could be if they could force like a three and out. They'll continue to ride the running game. Plowman bouncing off of a would-be tackler. And then gains maybe another yard after contact. It'll still be third down and five on the way. Big third and five here for really both sides. Fredericktown's able to get off the field. I mean, you know, they, they got the home run hitter in the backfield with Tegan Roll. They, you know, that can take off from wherever on the field. And if they're able to go up three scores, I mean, it puts a, you know, a big blimp on Cardington Lincoln here on the road. But if they can convert this and kind of keep the clock on their side, let's see if they do. Pirates need four as Beach going to get planted in the backfield. Sacked by Mason Hoflich, 190-pound senior, making it fourth down. And there was no room to operate for Beach back there. Let's take a look on the replay. You know, can't be holding it to, for too long with the, with the kind of rush that Fredericktown's going to bring. They're going to send some blitzers. They're going to make you really react pretty quickly and not able to are the Pirates, and it's going to go right back to Fredericktown here. Is that going to muff the snap here? And I think this might be Pirate Ball, Brian. It will be. Cade Carpenter with a huge miscue. And it gives the Pirates some life. Dial up the replay here. And it looked like indecision all the way from Carpenter. Maybe lost it a bit in the lights, whatever it was. It leads to a crucial mistake here as the Pirates now set up in business in enemy territory at the 40. Buck 43 remaining here in the opening frame. And they're going to come out empty set. Heavy pressure coming up the middle. Beach unloads it, but it's in the heavy traffic. Wow, in and out of the hands. Should have been intercepted by Carter Mole. Second down. Really just nobody open here, and he's just going to throw it up, but... Now you, you got to begin to become a little careful with the ball. You don't want to give the ball right back to Fredericktown after you, you know, got a lucky break. Carpenter muffed it on the punt. You were able to recover it. So you got the ball in the 40. You know, you're trying to go down here and get some points to get up on the board, stop some of this Fredericktown momentum. You don't want to give the ball right back to him on a turnover. So we talked about Beachy, or excuse me, Beach, Brian. You're not, you're not used to him turning the ball over so far here tonight. Two drop picks from Fredericktown as they'll run this right up the middle. Continuing to ride Denny here, who's got three yards on the gain, so it'll be third down. Pirates need to reach the 30 to move the chains. But when you're down 14 zip at one and seven, trying to end a losing drought of five straight, trying to avoid it six, I'm Definitely going to be convinced that this is going to be four down territory here. And they'll toss it to Plowman. And here's Plowman weaving his way, upended as he's going to be maybe about a yard shy, but a flag comes in, and this one's going to be coming back. 
going to be holding on Cardington Lincoln, so going to have to continue to try to play behind the chains. Two flags here early against the Pirates. Yeah, it looked like it was Denton Carlson. Got a piece of the jersey threads, and any time you see the hand lock on the jersey and gets a little stretchy motion, they are going to bring it back. As the clock winds, 50 seconds and rolling here in the opening quarter. Fredericktown so far with two Tegan Rule touchdown runs to take the lead. And that is a killer penalty because now it's third and 26 where they were looking at about a fourth and one situation. Hoffman in motion left to right. And a timeout burned by the Pirates here. I think uh, maybe an interesting timeout considering the down and distance here early on in the game. But at the same time, probably four down territory as I mentioned here. So you, you got to be thinking, hey, can, can we at least pick up 15 yards or so and try to make this a little bit more of a reasonable scenario for us, G-Man, to go for it on a fourth down? Yeah, you know, it, you're kind of in that no man's land here in high school football where, you know, if you punt it, you're probably going to end up in a touchback or set up good field position here for Fredericktown. So, nothing to lose here for Cardington Lincoln. Try to set up for fourth down. Maybe try to get back to, towards that, you know, original line of scrimmage where they were at and see if they can set up a fourth down play. So, you're going to one of your, you know, a place that you're, you're confident, you're asking your QB, you know, you know, what, what QB do you, what, what play do you want to run? What play are you confident in? We'll see if they try to go, you know, maybe for a deep shot or if they keep it on the ground here. But I expect them fully to air this one out. 29 seconds showing on the clock here in the opening frame. And they'll come out four wide. Man comes in motion. And Beach going to be flushed. And he's got a lot of room here to the near side. He will break it. And he's got a nice run down to the 35-yard line. So that's exactly what they needed, G-Man, to make this fourth down something a bit more attainable. Yeah, big play right there from Beach, the athletic QB, able to cut it back across the grain and find that open side to the left. There was absolutely nobody over here. No Freddies in sight. Is now fourth and manageable here, exactly the play call you want as they'll take this to the quarter break. 14-zip, Fredericktown on top here on senior night. Second quarter action, back on the way, live and free, only on the OH Report. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart, you're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. Big first quarter for Tegan Rule and the Freddies as they lead a 14 zip here at home. Final home game of the regular season for the Freddies and off to a nice start. Got Cardington Lincoln facing a fourth down and four here. And of course they are gonna go for it from the Freddies 34 yard line and they are gonna run it straight ahead. And it's gonna go nowhere and nowhere fast. Freddy for waiting on that one. And the run game had been working for Cardington Lincoln, but not enough push over there on that left side is not even really able to get past the line of scrimmage there as Fredericktown sniffed that one out quick and now sets them up with an opportunity to go up three scores here. Aiden Plow shut down on that fourth down run. So it's a North Central State College first down here for Fredericktown from their own 35-yard line. They've done most 
of their damage so far tonight. Just from the eye formation. Switch things up here. Come from the gun. And they're going to go deep, and it's Kane Carpenter with a big catch off the setup from Mast. And he's going to throw up the deuces and coast in 65 yards. Freddy's putting on a show. And it's been highlight after highlight. Tegan Rule celebrating with his buddy right there, Cade Carpenter, on the deep pass from the QB. I mean, he just burned the, the, the defensive back. Perfect pass, to right in the bread basket. And off the six, Cade Carpenter win as Fredericktown beginning to pour it on here at home on senior night. Mass with an excellent dime on the money. Carpenter, always a big play threat in the receiving game. And it looks like Fredericktown's going to line up and go for two. Try to make this a 22-point cushion. They'll run it straight ahead. Shut down, though, and I bet that would have been one of your dreams, G. Yeah. Lucas Herbs, the offensive lineman, getting an opportunity, but he stopped just short. Yeah, that's an offensive line's dream, Brian. Being able to line up in the backfield and get a handoff. And I think he fumbled it too, so maybe he wasn't ready for it, but almost had it. As Fredericktown now up 20 nothing, And really, they're looking fantastic on the offensive side of the ball. Their last two offensive plays actually last three, have all went for touchdowns. The last two drives, too, have only involved one play, and both have went for six. The Tegan Rule, you know, rushing touchdown and the Cade Carpenter receiving touchdown. So big play offense here so far here early for the Fredericktown Freddies. Been getting it done defensively as well. After this kickoff, we'll check out mine and Garrett's keys to the game for Fredericktown. Do a little foreshadowing. They're checking some boxes. <laughs> Say the least. This one kicks kind of short. Fielded at the 15-yard line. And it's taken by Journey Williamson for a minimal gain. So it'll be a North Central State College first down. Coming up here for the Pirates. But for Fredericktown, I just thought they needed to place that doubt in the head of their opponent, get off to an early big start. And, man, they have thrown some haymakers. As mentioned, their last three offensive touches have all gone for touchdowns, G. I mean, it's been a dominating performance here. You know, they had the shaky start defensively, you know, on that opening drive, but able to get the fumble recovery. You know, they turned it over on the punt, but able to stop them defensively. So, I mean, it, it's beginning to look like a full total team effort here is stop for a minimal gain was the Pirates. Fredericktown's defensive front standing tough. Yeah, you wanted to see them kind of rule possession tonight. That, of course, a play on Tegan's last name. They haven't needed to really have the ball so far, though, because just so much explosiveness. I mean, it's been like Kid Dynamite every single time they're touching the rock here as of late. Beach going to keep it near side this time and trucks his own teammate. It's going to be one of the hardest hits of the night. Donaldson really wore that one on the chin. Yeah, a little bit of friendly fire right there as Donaldson kind of got rocked by his own guy. Take a look on the replay right here. Boom. Roll, you know, coming up field, kind of forced Donaldson into him. So big time hit from Beach. He can lower the stick. Still able to pick up a couple yards, so it's third down four here for the Pirates. Got trips here to the near side. They'll bring Hoffman over to the left. And now Beach. And he just got panicked feet. Fourth down on the way. Had a clean pocket, G, man. I'm not sure what frightened him here. Uh, you know, he's got an opportunity to get that ball away, but you know, it's a chance of a split second. you got to make a decision quick, and especially with the kind of front that Fredericktown has. He's already been sacked once a night. That'll make it the second time. So you know, they're bringing the heat, and you got to be able to have the ball out quick. You know, take a chance. you got nothing to lose here. No reason to hold on to it. 
Beach does, takes a sack, and now Fredericktown looking at the ball back here with 940 left in the second quarter. It's going to be a low snap. Ashton Plowman with the punt, takes a big Freddie hop, and Rule's going to field it, chase all the way back to his own 30. So first down on the way here for the Freddies, who have been in fuego offensively. I mean, what do you think the odds are in Vegas, G, that they're going to score a touchdown here? Th three straight plays they've done it. Odds are. I'm curious what they do here, if they're going to try to air it out or try to keep it on the ground. Got the 20 spot here. And now look at this, Brian. They're going to put Rule, or no, excuse me, Carpenter back there in a Wildcat. Kate, of course, has plenty of experience at the quarterback position. And he's going to get stuck here at the 35, maybe a pickup of one. So nowhere to go there for Carpenter on that wildcat, wildcat keeper. But an interesting athlete Kate is out there. He can line up really wherever on the field. See where Fredericton elects to go here. See which skill guy they look to get involved. They'll hand it off. And it's Rule bouncing it to the outside. And Tegan Rule out near midfield picks up a North Central State College first down. This is just all the senior vision. Quick feet making things happen. Uh, there's two or three jump cuts there. you got to love the patience from Rule. The original hole that he was supposed to go through wasn't there, able to bounce it out to the right, follow some of his guys leading up through the hole. And this rushing attack for Fredericktown, something serious. And now I believe they got Carpenter back there again, Brian. They do. Here's Cade rolling near side. He's a righty, steps back, fires, going deep. Tegan with the grab. Everything working out right now for Fredericktown. Down to the 15-yard line in a gain of more than 30. And I mean, they got two or three guys that can do it all. Now Carpenter, he's going to line up as QB. He's going to roll out to his left, you might add, too, as a righty. That's a tough throw and hits Rule right on the run. Beautiful catch, too, from Rule. Big-time gain here from Fredericktown. This offense is just rolling. From the red zone, they'll come out. Trips to the right. Carpenter. Staying in at quarterback, and heck, why not after that last toss? Had Cade definitely started a handful of games last season under center for the Freddies, so this is a very familiar spot for him, and I think kind of a cool idea to get him quite a few looks back there tonight on senior night. Why not have some of your best athletes performing all over the field? been all domination here for Fredericktown. This offense has been incredible. The defense just as good. And now they're looking to make this 26 nothing if they can punch this in. It's going to go to roll. Tegan falls forward down to the eight-yard line. Give him three on the play. Pretty decent penetration this time by Cardington. And you see gang tackled. Four kids in white jerseys all combining to make the stop and bringing up a third down. Three yards needed for the Freddies to pick up a first down at about the five. And they'll have Mast in the gun. Hoflich flanked to his right. And they'll fake it to him. Quick throw out to Tegan Rule. Just took his eyes off the football. He's definitely having some visions of Pater, and it cost him fourth down. Yeah, first mistake here for Roll here tonight. Just kind of heard the footsteps. Was trying to get his head up field before the ball was able to get in those fingertips, and results in a drop. So fourth and three here for Fredericktown. A little bit of unfamiliar territory. I think they're going to settle for three here. So Luke Vion out here. 25 yard attempt, good snap, good hold, and the kick is pure. So the Freddies 
adding to their cushion. And it's the kicking game strong right there. Up and through in the seniors. All showing out tonight, G. Yeah, it's been an impressive performance here for Fredericktown, just putting it on the cutting to Lincoln Pirates here at home on senior night. And now with 628 remaining, Cardington will get the, another chance to try to you know, crack that scoreboard. Let's we'll see if they do it, but this Fredericktown defense ever really since that first drive has been pretty lights out. Offensively too tonight, they've been phenomenal, of course. Good atmosphere here tonight and cooler temperatures, but not quite cold yet. This is a perfect fall football night in North Central Ohio. As this one angled towards the near side, takes a hop and it'll go out of bounds. So a kicking infraction will go against the Freddies. As Cardington Lincoln get an opportunity to set up shop with some reasonable field position, definitely needing to score some points to try to keep some pace and that rests on the shoulders of their quarterback. Mr. Beach. If they want any chance in this game. They, there's got to be some kind of points put on the board here on this drive. Give the ball back to Fredericktown. Their offense has been, you know, on fire to say the least. So it'll be a North Central State College first down. Beach hands off. And Denny finding a crease. Still working his way down the far sideline as he makes a move on Carpenter. Finally drug down after a huge pickup into enemy territory. Much needed pickup too from Denny and company. Able to get to the outside, put a move, couple moves on a couple Freddies. Almost took that one to the house. Carpenter able to clean up the mess down there, but. Now some juice on that Pirates sideline. Let's see if they can finally get something going here on offense and get some points on the board. Single back set is going to be Denny again, trying the left side and more of the same success. Here he is. First down and more. As the drive continues to move inside the red zone all the way down to the eight yard line, G. Two big runs by number 13. And he's been really the catalyst on this offense so far running the football. You know, their big chunk plays are coming from Denny, the handoff to Denny, especially on that left side. He's been able to, you know, escape out of there, find the holes and find the creases. And let's see if this Pirates offense can finally get a, you know, some points on the board, get a touchdown here. Basically the same play call. It's going to be Plowman, though. And a big pile pushed out of bounds. And some extracurriculars at the end of the play here. You see, what, there's about five, six guys hit on the chalk, certainly forced out of bounds. But it'll be first down. Make that second down and goal here from the two-yard line. So prime position here for the Pirates. Try to answer the bell. So they got some of the big hog mollies up front. And there's going to be an encroachment penalty against the Freddies. It'll make it a little bit easier for him. Mark off maybe a yard, half the distance to the goal line. And it's going to be Plowman plowing his way into the end zone to the Pirates with an answer. Touchdown here for the Pirates getting right back into this game. Much needed drive, and a lot of that was from Denny. The Plowman able to you know, clean the plate right at the end. We'll see if Cardington elects to go for it. Yeah, I think they should go for it. Yeah. Two here, G. I think the analytics would likely favor that. That's what it's all about these days. 
Just following the numbers. It's all about math over the actual football. And they'll give it to Denny left side. And he's going to be marked down shy. So the Pirates not able to add two more. But they still get the touchdown. And they're big points right there as it trims the deficit down to 17. We'll take a quick timeout. You're watching live and free high school football exclusively on the OH Report. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. So the pirate ship motions its way into the end zone. Crucial points for them as they trim down the gap, 23 to six. And that bouncing ball on the kickoff nearly led a disaster for Fredericktown. Take one more look here. Just took an interesting hop and sometimes that oblong crazy shape of the football, it certainly juked out Logan Small. Almost had the Pirates set up with quality field position again, luckily for Fredericktown. If you're a fan of the Freddies, they got the football back at the 20. We've well, seen tonight, the Pirates have been able to move the football, you know, for the majority of the game, on, at least rushing the football. It's been, you know, on the defensive end, they've let up these huge chunk plays, a couple touchdowns, you know, over 50 yards. So let's see if, you know, this Pirate defense can get off the field, and that'll help. If that's rule, he'll be stopped around the line of scrimmage or maybe gain a one. So they'll give it to Rule, as he said, and just not a whole lot materializing there. The Pirates starting to stack the box and play a little bit more towards the run game. We've seen the Freddies be able to bash them with a the deep ball. Big explosive fireworks. See if they elect to do that with masts going to the sky. And he's got Carpenter settling down in a gap, and he'll pick up a North Central State College first down. And a late flag comes in as well. I guess it's going to be a late hit, unnecessary roughness. Yeah, no question. See it there, just kind of a pointless jump onto the pile of Ivini. Carpenter looks to be a little shaken up too. Kind of tugging at that left arm. So they're going to get close to midfield here after they march off 15 more. And with 4.41 to go here in the second quarter. Freddie's looking to keep the drive on the move. They'll give it to the up man this time. And it's going to be Hoflich, 6'2", senior. Hit and knocked down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Well, this defensive front for the Pirates, you know, it's getting a little bit better. And, they're, you know, they're stopping some of these, these minimal run gains for just, you know, a couple yards or, you know, forcing the Freddies to kind of turn into a passing offense here. Let's see if this defensive front can continue to see Carpenter back into the game after getting shaken up on the last one. Eight men in the box, four linebackers, four down linemen here for the Pirates. They'll run it straight ahead. And it's gonna be hard nose running. Mason again, I believe, with the carry. And he's able to get across midfield. So just kind of getting everybody involved right now at this point. 
Yeah, a lot of, you know, window dressing on that play to send Rule in motion to kind of get, you know, some of those linebackers flowing with him. Then try to sneak Hoflich right behind him with the inside give, but Pirates at least able to stand tough. Got a minimal gain out of it. Did Fredericktown and now a big third and six here. And they got the jet sweep here for Cade and Carpenter trucks his way forward across the 40. It's a North Central State College first down. And they had ran the same sort of play, the play before, except they didn't hand it off to the guy in motion. They kept it on the ground with the running back in the backfield this time. They pitch it out to Carpenter on that handoff, that little jet sweep. They will get a first down and a big gain as Freddy's beginning the march. Low on time here. Chewing up some clock as we're sub three minutes to go before the break and keeping the loan back in there is Mason Hoflich. And he's out to the 35. Gain of four. A couple carries on this drive for Mason. Kind of getting those yards that nobody likes to get, those tough ones. You know, in between the guards, right behind the center. And now they'll line up in this pro set and there's Rule back there in the backfield. Tegan dots the aisle. They'll toss it to him. Near side catches a big block. Huge collision and four hankies all fly <laughs> in. All at the same time. And I think and this is going to go against Fredericktown. Let's take a look. Yeah. You're not, that, that's been eliminated now from the high school game, what Trevor Bellman just did. Used to be my, my favorite block back in high school, yeah. but uh, no more crackbacks allowed, G. Yeah, I know a kid that I used to play with that loved that, <laughs> loved doing those blocks, and did take that one away though in, in the high school game for player safety. You know, can't hit you know a player that isn't looking. You know, big big safety issue is that one will go against the Freddies, but you want to roll that replay one more time, Brian, if you can. Check out the stiff arm at the end here by rule. I know it doesn't count. But look at this, grown man's strength. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, switch the ball carrying arm and everything to free up that right. And then what did the five fingers say to the helmet? Smack. But it's all for naught. As the penalty brings him back to the original line of scrimmage. Or excuse me, way beyond that. Second down and 20 as they go to the sky. Mason with the catch, and he's been heavily used. A lot of skill guys in this offense, so they like to get the ball, ball to Mason, one of them. Tegan Roll, obviously, Kate Carpenter. Of course, Ben back there at QB. They like to get it to him, too. Is just a little bit of pitch and catch right there, and got past the original line of scrimmage. Is now third and manageable here for the Freddies. Got a couple of receivers to each side, Mass rolling. And a flag comes in. For now, he's got the hookup with Carpenter. Would be first down yardage, but it's going to be a hold against the Freddies. And that's going to negate this nice play. I think there's some upset fans out there, Gary. What do you think? Yeah, there are definitely some upset Freddy fans out here. They're, they're a little disappointed in the call. Didn't see the holding. See if you can see it on the replay here. I, I think it was the, the right tackle on the far side, Brian, that eventually got called for it. But got to know you know, be a heads-up player. If he's rolling left and there's no need you know, to hold on out there, they're not going to be able to get there. So sets up you know, a third and long here for the Freddies. Going to need 17. Here's Cade. Looking to run all the way. And he got a lot of that yardage. It seems as if they continue just to shoot themselves in the foot on, you know, third and long, and then they'll get it back, and then it'll be third manageable, and they'll do it again. So let's see if this time they can finally play clean and pick up a first down, but this one's going to be on fourth down. So big time play here for both sides. Fredericktown needs five for a first down. Here's going to go Mass. Plenty of time. Airs it out. Too tall. Over the extended arms of Bellman. 
So Cardington going to take over with just 25 seconds remaining. And this one of the few misfires that we've seen from Mass so far tonight. Yeah, he's been on the money pretty much all night. And it's a little high, but, you know, what do they say if you're – if it hits the hands, you got to be able to reel it in. It's a tough catch. Mash just a little off target is now Cardington with 25 seconds remaining in this first half. Be curious what they do here, Brian. They haven't been able to pass the ball, you know, super well here tonight. They've been able to run the football pretty solid, but they're going to line up empty set here for Beach. He'll have the trips to his right. Look in middle, now comes back to the left. Uncorks one, and it's going to be tipped away. Tried to hook up with Denny deep in the passing game, and why not? Why it's kind of been that dude for him tonight. Almost had him too, Brian. Denny was able to get past that safety back there, able to get real in that ball. That would have been a house call for six, but... Nonetheless, ball was dropped, a little overthrown. Denny not able to get two fingertips on it. Now bring up second and 10 here with 14, or excuse me, 18 seconds remaining. How aggressive do you want to get if you're Cardington Lincoln? Two deep safeties here for Fredericktown. They'll just set up the screen game, and they've got Briggs. Weaving his way, and check this out. Still running, G-Man. Finally pushed out of bounds with four seconds left. No flags on the field. I see. Oh, actually. Yes, there is. I saw the officials talking, but I, I didn't see the hanky out there. But they're going to pick it up. And you're going to get this kid the football in space. Yeah, let's take a look just at the run after catch here. Yeah. I mean, Briggs just making defenders look silly out in the open field. I believe that's his first touch of the night. After that is a play call. You got to get him the football. Expect some more out of that in the second half, but still some time here for the Pirates to draw something up with 4.8 remaining in this first half. They're going to take a timeout. Just a little under five seconds to go here. And certainly in the high school game, you don't typically have a kicker that can line it up from 40 plus and deliver for you. So maybe you got time to try to throw it over the middle of the field, pick up a first down. Certainly got the opportunity with your quarterback to, to chuck it to the end zone at least once. I'm expecting a couple of options here. You got, you know, as you mentioned, Brian, the old Hail Mary. Could see maybe a little bit of a trick play, a little hook and ladder on the outside. Maybe get Briggs out in the open space. You see what he did on the last play. Other than that, not a lot of time really left to develop a ton of deep passing routes. Unless you're able to buy some time in the pocket and beach a struggle doing that here tonight against this front four of Frederick Towns. Like Lee will be the last play before the halftime break. And he's got a lot of guys running to the end zone. Caden on Corks looking there, and it's going to be incomplete. Flags all over the field. I'm thinking this is going to be roughing the passer against Fredericktown. And they call this a touchdown, Brian. What? I saw the signal. You see some of the referees standing down there. Okay, let's let's watch the replay here. Let, let me unpack a few things in my own mind. <laughs> so it's definitely double. Oh my god! Yeah, hands. Went that up. is a touchdown. Are you serious, Kalen Briggs? Somehow brought that baby in. I didn't even see him in the equation, G man. It was a late call. A lot of the people were. One, the, the flag, we're talking about the flag and say what, what whoa, oh man, hold on we, we gotta dial up this replay again <laughs> we'll show it for you folks slowing down a little bit here in a moment so 
unbelievable change of events here, G is. We're looking at potentially a 10-point game heading into the half. Maybe even a nine-point game, depending on what Cardington and Lexa do here. It looks like they're just going to try for the PAT. But off of the tip, Kaitlin, big play Briggs here on this drive, comes up with the touchdown. And the two-point conversion try stuffed at the one-yard line. But, I mean, I got to see this one more time. So here it is. Here's a deep throw to the end zone. And now let's let's really slow this thing down for you guys. Look at the concentration <laughs> there. Briggs bringing it in. And I didn't even see it. I thought it just got knocked down to the ground. And all of a sudden, you were right. They marked it a touchdown. And the officials didn't mess it up. We are at the break. It's been a very exciting first half of football so far. Fredericktown with the explosive plays, but Cardington with a big answer before the break. Keep it here as both marching bands are going to perform. We'll also have some halftime stats analysis and get you ready for half number two. It's live and free. High school football exclusively on the OH Report. There's a blood shortage and we came up to Dead Lover's Point at midnight on Friday the 13th. Lame. Guess I'm gonna waste all this blood by dying in a predictable horror movie way. 50% of Americans like watching blood get spilled in horror movies, but only 3% donated. When was the last time you donated blood? Number one receiver coming from the Shelby Whippets, Isaiah Ramsey. He's caught. At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience.
marching band seniors from our class of 2023 are Ryan Klinger, Dalton Edwards, Morgan White, Michaela Rowland, Abby Raber, Jillian West Johnston, Malia Holtry, Kyla Edwards, Elistra, and Anna Seymour. We finished tonight's show with Michael Jackson's ghoulish hit, Thriller.
supported by the drop pick Murphys and features an Irish jig with a rock and roll edge. It's become a popular anthem for professional sports teams all across the country. Sit back and enjoy, I'm shipping up to Boston. tonight's show with this hit recorded by American Idol winner Philip Phillips. Let's bring it all back to that lovely place we hold dear. Here's home.
Sonny! The Critter Crown Marching Band would love to congratulate the class of 23. Seniors, we wish you all the best of luck in your future. There's a blood shortage and we came up to Death Lover's Point at midnight on Friday the 13th. Lame. Guess I'm gonna waste all this blood by dying in a predictable horror movie way. 50% of Americans like watching blood get spilled in horror movies, but only 3% donated. When was the last time you donated blood? Number one receiver coming from the Shelby Whippets, Isaiah Ramsey. He's caught our attention over here, and we're certainly going to keep an eye on the Willard Flashes. We will see you next week on the Stat Leaders Brock Survivor, Spencer of the Next Year. At the Killbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart. You're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. What's up, America? Brian Skaronski here. And if you want to see me and the gang chop it up with some unintelligent conversation, we've got the show for you. Check out the OH Report video podcast every Monday, exclusively right here on the OH Report. It's halftime here in Freddieville. 23 right now for Fredericktown. 12 for the visiting guests of Cardington Lincoln. And what was a really exciting first half, G-Man. And I'm going to try to dial up all of the touchdown scoring plays for you right now. Let's see if this works. 
Nope. <laughs> okay. We tried. <laughs> Anyways, uh, just to review the scoring. So Tegan Rule, super hot start for him. You know, two touchdowns fresh out of the gates. One really big, long 73-yard touchdown run. Cade Carpenter followed that up with a 67-yard catch. It was 20 to nothing in favor of the Freddies. Plowman got into the end zone, trimmed the deficit down a little bit, and then Briggs with, in my opinion, one of the plays of the season on the final snap of the first half has got it to where we are now it's been a fun game yeah an unbelievable ending to that first half Briggs somehow he had the the big bubble screen play too where he took it you know all the way down they gave them a chance to just throw it up at the end towards the end zone and Briggs somehow deflected by a couple of Freddies was able to collect it uh, keep it off the ground and able to possess it the refs called it a touchdown and here we are it's a tight game 23-12 just separates these two and carding to Lincoln they're gonna get the ball back too so another chance to kind of nibble into this deficit could make it a three-point game if they're able to convert a touchdown and a two-point conversion so we're set up for a solid finish here Brian certainly looked like it was gonna be a runaway victory by Fredericktown early on in the contest has not shaken out that way as the Pirates are gonna get the football here to kick off quarter number three uh, maybe that one's bobbled and they will I do want to show that crazy touchdown on the last play of the second quarter, though, one more time. So here's Beach rolling to his left, puts it up, and then somehow, some way down at the bottom there, Briggs able to haul it in. I mean, if that's not top play material, top plays don't exist. It's the best play all year that I've seen. That gets my vote. So it'll be a North Central State College first down to kick things off from their own 18-yard line of the Pirates. And they'll keep it on the ground. They're going to run to this left side where they had a ton of success in the first half. Not so much here as Denny slung down. I think he might have even lost a little bit. That was Cade Carpenter out there on the outside. Staying patient, able to find Denny and sling him down. As you know, They had success running towards the outside, and Denny was kind of, you know, the catalyst back there for the Pirates so far here tonight, especially out in space. He's able to make a couple miss, but not on this play. Carpenter able to sling him down for a loss. Trips to the left side, and they'll keep it on the ground, running right this time. And it's going to be Aiden Plowman. And he's going to get out across the 25-yard line. Pretty decent pickup. It'll be third down coming up. Well, I'm a very physical runner. We've seen he had a touchdown in that first half. They kind of got this score a little bit closer. And then, of course, you just mentioned it, Briggs able to haul in that touchdown and really make this a game and, and give some of those guys some confidence for the Pirates. Now on their first offensive possession out of the half, brings up a crucial third and three here. Off the jet sweep. They're gonna get hit right at the line that they needed to pick up the first down. We'll give them some of that forward progress. They will move the chain. So crucial first down, not to go three and out for the Pirates here in the opening drive of the second half for their offense. Continues their chances to stay alive in this game. Yeah, great call. Definitely don't want to come out and go three and out. Give the football right back to Fredericktown as they got the connection over the middle. And this was the hero on that final drive, Kaylin Briggs who brought in the touchdown and also had the huge catch and run to even put them in a scoring position at the end of that first half. Expect them to get the ball in his hands a little bit more frequently here in the second half. He only had a couple touches, and I think both were on that same drive, Brian. The bubble screen that got him down there, and then the Hail Mary touchdown pass that was converted somehow fell in the lap of Riggs, but he's a playmaker. Been making plays here for the Pirates last couple drives. Let's see if they continue to get it to him out in space. Got him set up in a great spot here. Just need a yard to pick up the first down. As they'll fan him out. 
Flag comes in right at the snap. And I think that there were too many men on the field, G. Felt to me like Cardington Lincoln had 12 guys out there. Because I saw him with five wide and then a running back. That doesn't seem right. He's going to go against the Pirates, too. Illegal substitution. Going to call it a legal substitution. So not how you want to continue the drive here for the Pirates. They're moving the football pretty well and getting a couple first downs and now sets them up. You know, still second and manageable here, but at least had the great success on first down with Briggs and a big chunk play. Is see if this drive continues for the Pirates here. Yeah, it could definitely be a momentum killer for him. A lot of contact there. Flag will come in. As you saw Briggs coming across the middle, interfered with. Take one more look on the CES Credit Union replay. Definitely a lot of contact before the ball showed up. Tegan Rule, I believe, on the coverage. Trading penalties here on this drive would result in a first down here for the Pirates. Ball almost at midfield here. So a tough start here, really here for both sides in the second half. 840 and rolling here in the third quarter. Denny breaks it to the outside. Had a nice little burst as he was able to catch the edge and string it out for a pickup of six yards. And I like the fight that we're seeing here from Cardington Lincoln on the road, especially after they got popped in the mouth so big early. I mean, there were fireworks in not just the running game, but the passing game early on. Everything flowing in the Freddy's direction, and they've settled in a little bit here. Got the last 12 points. Got the ball on the move here in enemy territory. But this goes nowhere fast. The flag, though, coming in late. Yeah, I think it's going to go against the Pirates. They're going to call this holding, I believe. You see right there, I think it was on a Mullins. The refs still want to talk about it. A little confusion. So how many flags here in this opening drive? Really for both teams. Kind of stopping themselves. They've had a you know a solid chance to go down here and get some points and now bring up second and a mile. Way back at their own 40-yard line. But a good throw and catch into enemy territory and way more than that. Breaking away from the pack, Austin Vales. Drug down inside the 10-yard line. Check out this run to get him set up in scoring position, G. Man, he took a pop too and Vales able to escape out of there. Somehow stay on his feet. And you got to tip your cap to Cardington Lincoln, man. They're, they're, they're playing their butts off. I mean, they're right back into this game. They're, they're knocking on the doorstep of Fredericktown to make this, you know, a one possession game. This offense has now come to life. And if you're the Freddies, especially here on senior night, got 14 of them, you want to stand up tall here. Make it tough for the Pirates. They'll do just that here on first down. Good play right there from the D-line, stringing that out. Making a wall. There was nowhere to go for Denny. See on the replay, I believe that's Mullins getting into their first hat. And the rest of Freddy's come and clean up the mess. But Ball on the 10-yard line for the Pirates. Knocking on the doorstep here. 
See if they can punch this in, or is this Freddie Z, Z going to stand tall? This has been an area of concern for the Pirates so far on the season. Have walked away too many times so far in the campaign with no points in the red area. As they run right into the teeth of the defense again. Pick up maybe two. So now it looks like they have to air it out with Beach back there at QB. He's had a couple, I mean, when he gets time, he's been able to kind of dice up the defense, but it all depends if some of those Freddies are kept out of the backfield and he's able to have you know a clean pocket and have clean feet. So 6-16 remaining here in this third quarter. Big time play here for really for both sides. Cardington Lincoln trying to make this just a one score game. Two back set. Beach flows to the right. He's going to take off and run it himself. Tripped up. Ball squirted out. But the ground causing the fumble. Of course wasn't able to get into the end zone. So it's going to be fourth down on the way here for the Pirates. And they got to go for it. Yeah, and expect him to go for this one. However, Duke kicking the field goal would make it, you know, a one possession game, but you got the ball, you know, about the four or three yard line. You, you, you're going to want to go for this. And I expect them to, and they will. So expect them to go to their best playmaker, see if they elect to keep it on the ground or maybe try to air it out here. Big time play. They got Briggs wide to the right. They're going to roll that way, and it's going to be a quarterback design run all the way, fighting for the end zone, but not going to get there is Beach. The Fredericktown defense doing their job on the goal line when things matter most. Initially thought he was going to be able to walk in, Brian, but able to close the gap. Where's them linebackers? Just nowhere to go. He almost got a push from, from, from some of his offensive linemen, but big time stand here for Fredericktown. Is now they got to go about 99 yards to get a score back on the board. It was Bellman who was able to wrap him up around the waist and stop his forward progress and momentum. A couple of his friends came in to help make the stop, so a huge goal line stand there for Fredericktown. Keeps this at an 11-point deficit. And, of course, they've got the big play offense. But going backwards here, Cardington... Asking for a safety. I think he's going to be marked down, though, at about the one-yard line, one and a half. But they did go backwards. So all of us, the Pirates, G-Man, they're playing them with a whole lot of confidence. They got a little bit of momentum on their side. It kills them, but they didn't get any points there. But if you can get a stop with Fredericktown backed up in the shadow of their own goalpost. But right on cue... One in seven teams tend to make mistakes like that. That's a mistake you can't have, too, in, in this magnitude of a game. You know, when you're going on the road, you're already, you know, odd stacked against you, and Fredericktown's back's against the wall, and, you know, you commit a miscue, a big foul, big penalty against the Pirates just jumping off sides, not watching the ball, and Mass able to use the hark out to his advantage, and now they're going to hand it off the rule, but there's nowhere to go. As you mentioned it, this Cardington Lincoln defense is playing inspired. They're motivated, and they got some confidence behind them. Tegan Rule, who was shaking and baking, he was over 100 yards, folks, in the first seven minutes of tonight's contest. No running lanes available right there. Critical third down on the way here for Fredericktown. They'll need four. As Carpenter comes in motion, they'll give it to him. Flag flies. It'll stop the play dead in its tracks. And it's going to be an illegal motion here against the Freddy. So they'll back up even more. Half the distance to about the three. And Cutting Tlinga took got a break right there. Because <laughs> that wasn't a flag, Brian. I think Kate Car Carpenter celebrating down here in the end zone for I, six. I think you're right. I think that was about to be a 94-yard house call. And there, there was one guy to beat, and Carpenter, he had the angle. He had the leverage, and kind of got a break there, did the Pirates. And now they got, they got to be able to capitalize on something like this. Let's see if this defense stands tall. They're going to line up in this I formation. 
They're going to go just with a flat man-to-man -man across the board, but it's going to be Rule with the call. And you see all those guys piled into the box for the Pirates. Great pursuit. Initiated there by Aiden Pl Plowman. And this defense getting off the field. You got to think how big it would have been, too, if they were able to get that touchdown. And they could have got another stop. And you guys got the respect for them, according to Lincoln, that they have earned here tonight just on the field. Uh, they're playing right with Fredericktown here. And curious, they send a lot of pressure back there to try to block it, but Mullins does get it off. Takes a hop, and it's going to be filled and immediately downed. Probably a wise decision there by Eli Hoffman. See, look, there's three Freddies just all lurking in the water. Smart play. <laughs> and it's going to be excellent field position here for the Pirates says they'll have it at the 39-yard line of the Freddies. And they've shown a proclivity tonight to be able to move the football, certainly on the ground. And at times, we've seen Beach be able to exploit some gaps in the passing game as well. Yeah, I think especially at the end of that first half and now on, that on the first drive of the second half, they were kind of, the passing lanes are starting to get open and Beach was able to find some of his playmakers. This one's going to be a little pop pass over here. Yeah, they'll toss it off to Plowman, who's able to drive forward for a pickup of six yards. So it'll be second down and four here. And Cardington Lincoln with 2.15 to play here in this third quarter. Big opportunity to try to, again, cut this down to a single score deficit. Wouldn't be surprised then to maybe, you know, run a little play action here. They've been living on the ground game and then maybe hit somebody over top. Give me a little read option here for Beach and look at him using his speed to his advantage. Big time game for the QB. It's a North Central State College first down picked up by Beach. And this is just all about reading the ends, great blocking, solid execution, and Beach throwing on a little extra. And you can kind of feel it over here on the Fredericktown side. You know, they've kind of sucked the crowd out of this game, and they're getting a little quiet out here, and now the running attack. You feeling a, a, a little bit of tenseness uh, out there hear, in the Freddy cheering oh, section? I, I hear the one cowbell, Brian. That's about <laughs> it. Other than that, it's... They're kind of just watching the, the truck continue. I guess the ship continue to move on the field. Is This rushing attack has been pretty lethal for Cardington. Pirates have been solid, gashing the Freddies basically throughout the duration of the game with the ground attack. Stick with it here. And Wyatt Denny down to the 17-yard line. Haven't had a ton of, you know, chunk running plays. They've had a couple, you know, a handful. But other than that, it's been, you know, five, five, six yards here. I mean, they're able to, the offensive line is moving bodies up there for the Pirates. But it seems as if fredericktown has been able to play that bend, don't break mentality. Once they get it to the goal line, they're not able to punch it in are the Pirates. So you hear the cowbell ringing. The Freddies are beginning to get a little bit loud over here. So let's see if that has any effect on the Pirates. It's going to be play action. Beach running for his life almost immediately. And he's going to get hit at the line of scrimmage. Drop for no gain on the play. Fourth down. There's nowhere to go right there from Beach. Just too many guys in the backfield for the Pirates. And they bring him down for a sack. And now fourth down. Fourth down territory here for the Pirates too. So I think they might elect to let this one run out in they will. So that'll be the third quarter. We are headed to money time. Got a heck of a game on our hands to bring it back. Fourth quarter came action on the way. At the Killbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. 
Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. We welcome you back with a big fourth down six here from the 17, Cardington Lincoln. Trying to pick up the first down, and they will. As we welcome you into money time here on the OH Report, Brian Skronsky, Garrett Parlett with you on the call here from Fredericktown. And it's been an interesting game, especially that third quarter. No points were scored. Cardington Lincoln with every snap there in the frame with the exception of four to G-Man. It feels like they should be going in for a go-ahead score here, but they're still down 11. They've had a couple of miscues and really just shooting themselves in the foot with penalties, but, you know, the resiliency they're showing, and here's another one, Brian. Fumble on the field. I think the Pirates are able to fall back on it and might have. Oh, they did. They escaped adversity right there. Whew. Check this out on the replay. Just a not great connection there from Plowman, from Beach. Not sure if that was meant to be a play action or if Aiden was just supposed to take it straight ahead. Nevertheless, a lot of fortune favoring the Pirates right now. But can they take advantage? Got the loan back with Denny. And after the motion, they'll hand it off to Wyatt. He's able to escape through some traffic, lunging He's towards in. the end zone. He's in there. What a turn of events in this one, Brian. It doesn't get much better than K. Maction and Cardington Lincoln and Denny serving up plates and crossovers like a waitress at Denny's. He's doing it all here tonight for Cardington Lincoln. He's in for a touchdown. And Look where we're at here. Ordering up a little Grand Slam special right there. Give me some syrup on top of my hotcakes. We got a game. Of course, they're going to go for two here. Every analytic would favor that. Try to make it a three-point game. But they're not going to get it again, G. 0 for 3 tonight on two-point conversion tries. Oh, late call came in. I think, are they giving him the points? I don't think so. I heard the radio guys next to me say they're getting, are they getting it? They are. They are. G they gave like, it to him. Give me the replay. I think it's a late push right here at the end, Brian. I think they're saying okay. he fell in. Okay. Are you not entertained, folks? This is what Friday Night Football is all about. So what if you're one and seven coming into tonight, playing with some pride? So what if you've got an early lead in your Fredericktown? None of that matters, that's all the past. And just 10.41 on the clock. This is such a crucial game for Fredericktown here tonight, not just because you want to win on senior night and send out these 14 strapping young 12th graders with great memories that they'll cherish forever, but also not 100% out of the K-Mac picture, even though I looked at the score of the Northmore Center per game, and maybe it is kind of a wrap. But at the same time, so, so much still on the horizon in terms of the playoffs. And the Pirates looking to spoil all that here tonight. Squib kick straight up the middle. Mishandled. It's about the fourth time that's happened so far. 
And Logan Small drives his legs forward out to the 28-yard line. So they'll have a North Central State College first down there. And a Freddy's offense that took just three snaps in the third quarter. See if it's kept them on ice a little bit or if they're able to kind of get their way out of that chill and heat things up. That, that's what they did early. Well, I think if you were watching that first quarter and turn it off, you might think this game's 56 nothing, Brian, the way this offense was moving the football. And they were hitting, you know, not just, you know, chunk plays. I mean, they didn't touch on passes for 70 yards. This one's going to go to Caden Carpenter on the sweep. He's been dynamite, but this defense has been even better here in the second half. Nowhere to go. Flag from the far side. A legal shift again. So they got him with the same exact penalty that wiped out what could have been a Cade Carpenter 96-yard touchdown run either, earlier. And I'm watching the replay. I, I'm not seeing it. Okay. I don't see anything here either to errant that call. But these linebackers for the Pirates are flowing, and you got to be able to rely on your linebackers to make players and you know make tackles in space. And they've done so here. Really, ever since that first quarter ended, they've played pretty well, this defense has. And now first and long here for the Freddies. It's going to be play action. Mass drops back. They'll set up the screen game. Tegan Rule smacked basically right after he caught it. Big pop on the play made there by Ashton Plowman. Kind of and a he, he, John Elway step back there. He he read this the entire way, did Plowman. He, he's seen the way that, you know, Mass was a treating like that, kind of setting up that screen. You've seen the, the lineman trying to get out in front and let the defensive lineman get upfield. He read it, immediately spotted it, went to find, the you know, the guy that was going to catch the ball, and that was rule, and he, you know, gave him a lick. As now this defense for the Pirates got their ears pinned back. Go to the air again, swing it out to the far side with Bellman, plenty of room. Better pursuit. And so it'll be third down on the way here and a crucial one. Biggest play of the night here. Freddies need the 37. They'll toss it, just put it in the hands of Tegan Rule. Tegan's such a special player, and he's breaking away from the pack. Tegan Rule, 67 yards, bombs away. Big touchdown for the Birds. Yeah, let's say big time players make big time plays and big time moments, and right there, they need a Tegan Rule to convert that third down, and he's able to not only convert it, baby, but he takes it all the way for six. He's had a big night tonight on senior night, keeping the Freddies alive here as they continue to extend their lead. It's now 29-20. His second touchdown tonight of at least 67 yards, and it comes with 8.40 to go. Massive. This to make it a 10-point cushion. And it's a big booming kick. It'll count. So what a run by Tegan Rule on third down when they needed it most. We'll step aside. We'll be back. Fourth quarter action heating up here in Freddie Town. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart. You're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. Oh, 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 oh,
have had a little bit of a lot. Certainly a ton of fun here tonight at Fredericktown, who lead it now by 10. A little bit of breathing room for them on senior night. As it's 30 to 20, Tegan Rule with another big touchdown run. He's got a three pack of those. We'll show it to you one more time here in a second. But man, certainly felt like the tides were shifting in favor of the Pirates here to come on the road and play stunner. Big plays though, have really cost them tonight, G. Yeah, I mean, how many of those have we seen where it's been over the top, you know, runs from Rule, a uh, catch from Carpenter. I mean, they've been able to expose, you know, the deep parts of this defense from Carding to Lincoln, but now the Pirates, they got to, you know, play with some tempo here. They're going to go deep themselves. Beach way under throws the intended target, Kalen Briggs, who had about seven steps there. Man, yeah, he could have put 30 more yards under that. Yeah, Beach was able to connect with him. Uh, that's a touchdown. Uh, speaking of touchdowns, this is what just happened a moment ago on a big third down and four. Huge opportunity for the Pirates. And this from Tegan Rule. Closing in on two bills. Really patient running here by Wyatt Denny. But then he just gets planted by Lucas Herbs. And now the Pirates are going to become in a tough spot if they're not able to score here on this drive. Is that it's going to be become time where you know the clock's not going to be your friend anymore and it's going to become a problem where you can't run the ball as much. And that was kind of what was setting up some of those passes for the Pirates, where Beach was able to fake to a running back and find an open receiver downfield. But... They're going to become a one-dimensional offense if they can't, you know, convert here and get a score on this drive. It's third and 10, 7.45 to play. It's 30 to 20 on your alumni roofing scoreboard. Pirates want to talk things over here, Garrett, as starting to run out of opportunities. Definitely got to come away with some points here. And you, you hate burning the timeout because the clock, of course, not really on the move that much. But you, you also you, you want to get something in, a favorable play call that you're confident with, that you can have your quarterback, Beach, go out there and sling it. Certainly like him on the edge a lot better tonight than I have from the pocket. I would expect them to go back to Briggs. Um, you know, we had the big couple plays before the half, but not only that, uh, on this drive alone, he had, you know, that corner beat by four or five steps. Beach is able to lay that out there. He, he's able to take that in for six, so maybe expect a double move on the outside here, you know, from Briggs and see if Beach can connect with him or see if they try to get Beach out of the pocket, find some guy on the sideline here. It's a big, big play here. You know, the, they're able to convert this. It keeps their chances alive in this game. May even be four down territory at this juncture in the contest. Here's Beach. And he's going to be picked off. And it's going to lead to a Freddy touchdown from Trevor Bellman. Turn out the lights. Pirate ship starting to sink. And there is going to be a flag too. I think this is on the return, however. So I believe the points are still going to count here. What a turn of events this game, man. It's been a roller coaster. The Pirates got right back into things here at the beginning of the second half. And then the Freddies beginning to put him away with a pick six. Real result in a touchdown. So now Fredericktown pulling away up 16. Aiden Plowman, the intended target, just simply lost his footing. Beach locked in on him and made such a consequential mistake there as that is all but going to end things. 16-point cushion now. Still, I guess, just a two-point possession game. And with the 15 yards tacked on, it's going to make this, hey, maybe I better hold the phone. A couple touchdowns, a couple two-point conversions, and this is going to be a lot more challenging PAT than your standard. Yeah. 
So this is going to be from 35 yards out. And Vion definitely got plenty of leg, baby. Big drive. Crucial point. Multiple flags. We got an altercation here. Some extracurricular activity between both sides. And if you're Fredericktown at this point, get off the field. No point in getting locked up in any fist fights, nothing crazy. You got the big lead. Looking to notch win number six. And the Freddie Bird game on the horizon. And what did we hear from just about every senior football player tonight, G, when they read off their favorite accomplishment? Beating Centerberg last year, Brian, in that Freddie Bird game. They got the new fancy trophy. I know that we're going to be promoting the heck out of that thing next week. Centerberg up huge tonight on Northmore. I think we're going to get two unsportsmanlike penalties. I think the key here is just, yeah, is anybody going to get kicked out? It won't be. And the extra point is good. All set up by this. The read in the passing game, shooting the dice towards the zone for a six-point swing. Trevor Bellman hopping his way into the zone, 37-20. Fredericktown in total control. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. What's up, America? Brian Skaronski here. From the eight-yard line, the Pirates game, on the return, taking a bomb. We've got the show for you. Whoop. Check out the Orange Report video podcast. So Cardington Lincoln, who had erased the deficit, now all of a sudden back in a 17-point hole in a game that's had so many twists and turns Kind of like a, a river bend, and the Pirates navigating it well through the middle channels, G, but not so much here down the stretch. Well, they're right back in this game. Tegan Roll is able to break out for a huge touchdown run, and then Bellman on the outside with a pick six. Kind of put this game away, unless the Pirates can score pretty quickly here. It's going to take a lot to get back into this game as Beach, he's going to avoid the pressure, and he's going to get out of there. So getting it knocked out of bounds here on the Freddy sideline. And we've seen Caden escape the pocket plenty of times tonight. Feels the pressure. And with Fredericktown sitting back in zone defense, a lot of running lanes out there, and he's able to pick up the first down. Empty set, swings it out, clean blocking, and here's Ashton Plowman. And he's slung down for another first down here for Cardington. Back on the move. And the offense has been incredibly better than it was in that first quarter. There was they couldn't do anything on offense, but now, you know, they're picking their spots. And they're not totally out of this game yet. It's got to happen in a hurry, but 640 remaining here in this fourth quarter, down 17. You like them to maybe you know pick up the tempo here and, and kind of go no huddle in a sense. Let's see what they like to do here. They're going to keep Beach back there alone. So no protection back there with a the running back or a tight end. Freddie's just rushed four. Beach steps up, quick pass. It's going to be behind the intended target, and Austin Vales couldn't squeeze it. Second drop on the night for Vales. 
ball's a little behind him. You got to be able to make that play. You know, you, you need your guys to step up here. Fails not able to reel that one in. And now the Pirates got second and ten here. 621 remaining here in this game. Again, straight drop. Beach on the three-step drop. Incomplete at the feet of Wyatt Denny. So it's quickly third down. And I don't think this is really the Pirates game. We saw them have a lot of success getting in behind that running attack, certainly able to spill it out to the edge and get behind these big tackles. When it's just five wide, we got to throw it against your secondary. Pirates finding it a bit more challenging here if they can't lean on that play action in the pass game. Beach again to the outside. Bellman, did he pick this one off? Nearly had a second. Still be fourth down. But this one, pretty close. Let's see. I think that one hit the ground. Bellman not able to get his hands underneath it. I think he could have sold it a little bit better, Brian, if he maybe would have hopped up. Act like he had the ball to try to take off. Always got to be selling yourself yep. out there, G. Let the officials know. So what if it hit the grass? I got it. Trips here to the near side. Fourth down, 10. Beach. Stuck. Hit hard by Cameron Coble. Ends the drive and probably ends the night. First down. Freddie's taking over. That probably should do it here as Fredericktown responded here in this fourth quarter when the Pirates made it just a three score or a three point game excuse me the defense stepped up big the offense has stepped up big and now all they got to do is run out this 606 and now their eyes will focus on that Freddie Burke trophy going to come out in the pro set handoff straight ahead and it'll be Mason Hopewood. And he's been a nice change of pace for them periodically throughout the night. They'll give it to the fullback yet again and just shimmy shaking, G. Kept the feet pitter-pattering there in the hole. Looked like he was going to get hit almost immediately. But as you see on the replay, just won't stop. My bad, Brian. I was trying to catch one of the footballs oh. the cheerleaders were throwing up here. It's always fun to leave a game with a souvenir, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't get my hands on one, though. I don't think they look my way. Ben hands it off. Three straight carries for Hopelick. And he got about nine more. Some chunk runs here for this fullback in Hovlick. Finding open grass, making defenders pay on his way. There's now under five minutes remaining here in this one in Fredericktown. Looking like they might be able to punch another score in before this one goes final. Riding the big bowl again. Another North Central State College first down. <laughs> Hasn't been a flawless performance here for Fredericktown, but when adversity's hit, They've been able to, to maintain it well and respond. And which good football teams are able to do, and they've done so here tonight, is going to be another fullback give. I think they're just going to continue to do fullback gives, Brian, until this clock runs out as more extracurricular activity. Could you tell these two were K-Mac rivals or no? <laughs> yeah, there's almost always frustration at the end of games, especially when you're on the losing end of things as we're down to the final four minutes. 
And it looks like Cardington Lincoln wants a TO here, G. So I'll take a quick moment. Thank all of our generous sponsors out there, including Park National Bank, where you mean more. The Killbuck Savings Bank. Knox Community Hospital. CES Credit Union. And Alumni Roofing, along with North Central State College. Combining to bring you live and free coverage of tonight's football game. Couldn't do it without our generous sponsors, so please support those that support high school sports here in your area. So second down, nine, and guess who? Six straight carry for Hoflich. Lincoln wants another T.O. here as they force a third down. I think this one probably out of reach, but no sense in not trying here if you're Cardington Lincoln. However, for Fredericktown, keep it on the ground one more time. Allow about 30 more yards or 30 more seconds to burn off this clock. And, boy, they've got a kicker with a big-time leg. Might just kick one through. Get up to a 40 spot and feel pretty good having the Pirates doubled up. They played great here in this fourth quarter, Hester Fredericktown. Really no need to try to force anything here. Just take it on the ground. If you get the first down, great. If not, go ahead and kick the, you know, the field goal. Try to go up, put a 40 piece on here on senior night. It's carding to Lincoln, you know, had their last gasp. But this one, as you mentioned, Brian, probably a little bit too far out of reach, but no sense in throwing in the towel. Come out from the gun this time, Mass. High snap handles it, though. And they'll give it to Tegan Rule, eating up yards. Going to be just shy, though. So it'll be a little decision here for the Fredericktown coaching staff. Actually didn't get a great spot there. I thought he was going to be a lot closer. Still looking at about three yards more needed to pick up the first down at about the six-yard line. And they are going to keep the offense out on the field. You know, I like this, Brian. Try to finish this game right here. Try to get this first down. Great move inside for Tegan Rule, who's been ruling the night. Into the end zone for the fourth time this evening. It's been Tegan Rule in this offensive line all night. He's at chunk plays. This one, not quite as far, but in the end, it still results in six as Fredericktown now begins to pour it on. They're up 43 to 20. I think they might even elect to go for two. No, I'll be mistaken. They're going to keep the field goal on the field, the kicker on the field, excuse me, try to attempt this PAT to go up 24. So Vian on for the PAT. And he smashes it home. 44-20. Now the count in favor of Fredericktown. A lot of smiles here on senior night. Definitely on this face right here. 19, Tegan Rule. Been making a lot of big plays tonight. 3-11 left here. This one. All but over is Fredericktown now. Moves her eye to that illustrious Freddie Burke trophy, Brian. And if you haven't seen it, it is pretty to the audience out there. We are going to have a special video created this next week just for the Freddie Burke trophy and what that means around here. Yeah, they just created it last year, but in terms of the rivalry on both sides, heard from Centerburg and Fredericktown, some of the players that were competing in past teams before they created the trophy on the special video that we made a season ago. Now, this season, we're going to hear from these two squads and the guys that are going to be competing for it next Friday night. Big return here by Plowman. Showing the Jets as he scoots out across the 30. 
And while it's a lopsided score now, 24 point differential, it wasn't that long ago in this very quarter that Denny with a touchdown and a two point conversion made it 23-20, though that feels like a long time ago at this point, G. Yeah, Fredericktown turned it on after that. They kind of fell asleep. You know, the end of that second quarter and the beginning of the third and throughout, finally able to wake back up and kind of put the offensive showcase back on the field as they're up 24 here. And now Beach going to see if he can facilitate Ooh. something. But this one, in harm's way, will be incomplete. Beach threw just his third interception of the season tonight. Bellman was able to return it for a huge touchdown, kind of swung the pendulum of momentum and ended comeback threat for the Pirates. Beats down the middle, in and out of the hands. Almost a big play by Briggs. He's had a few of them tonight. Not this time. Yeah, I gotta be able to squeeze that one. It's a great throw from Beach. He puts it right on the numbers mm. where Bricks can only get it and not able to squeeze it. It's great defense from Fredericktown to knock it free. It's two minutes and some change here, 55 seconds to be exact. Left in this one for Fredericktown. Earns another victory this time on senior night. Gotta give some love to Logan Small there, knocking it out, at least helping. They've got the screen set up on the left side. And a lot of speed slipping down late. Ashton Plowman. But he's got the first down yardage needed. Plowman didn't slip down. He had some extra green grass in front of him. Would have had to make a man miss, but was able to do so. A lot of speed there in the open field for Cardington and Plowman. If you're Logan Small watching the film, you're going to let everyone know he heard the footsteps. Just went to the slide. Down to just two and a half minutes remaining. Low snap, beach handles. Goes deep and not sure what happened there on the coverage from Billy Woodring. Results in a huge play. Yeah, I don't understand what happened here. Not sure if he thought it was going to the guy he was guarding, and there was Vales able to reel it in for a big chunk play here for the Pirates. So that brings him all the way down to the 25-yard line, clock rolling under two minutes to go. Caden with a pump fake. Now he's just going to run straight ahead. And he dives out across the 20, out to the 18-yard line. Clock still moving. Down to 90 seconds. And Lincoln huddling up here. I think they kind of know that the writing's on the wall. Just want to leave Fredericktown with a little bit more positivity. Late touchdowns always help. Second down here. And Beach, the quick throw, he's got the hookup. And Garrison got the first down. I would love to ask who you think our MVP is going to be, Brian, but I think we both know the answer to that. So I think that question probably should be thrown in the trash. Well, we'll at least pose it to our viewing audience. We'll allow you to throw out some comments on the Facebook and the YouTubes and let us know who do you think should come join me and Garrett for a post-game interview as the man of the game. I mean, looking at the numbers, it does seem pretty <laughs> obvious. But. Just 50.6 seconds remaining. Yeah. 
Beach sets up, and he's going to miss fire. So it'll be third down. Looking for Vales there. Here comes another empty set this time. And he's going to step up, fire too tall, almost hooked up with Vales on the back end. So it'll bring up fourth down. It was almost a fortunate bounce for a score into the hands of Vales. Instead, it'll be fourth down 10 and last chance here for the Pirates. They're not letting the Fredericktown Freddies feel this victory just yet. Only a couple seconds left in this one, but a couple of incompletions as Beach is last hope. Over top, this will be a touchdown. Beach and Vales connect for a big time pitch and catch. Good looking play here. Just a little too late for Cardington to start finding their stride offensively. But I like going after it here late in the fourth quarter. Why not? Makes it 44-26. And that bus ride home to Cardington. At least one more fun story that you guys can talk about. As they'll go for two. And it's going to be Beach weaving his way. So trims it back down to a two-score game, 16 points. But with just 37.2 ticks, I mean, the odds got to be 99.99999%. Freddie's going to leave here tonight on senior night with a big victory. But I do enjoy kind of the gutsiness here at the end. It's a tough throw. A couple of defenders. He tried to put it over top of a couple Freddies and able to get it right where Vales can get it and no one else is able to get a fingertip on it is now all Ferguson has to do is receive this kick and get in victory formation is, you know, you, you, you gotta give the Pirates a lot of respect coming in here tonight. I mean, they showed that they weren't just going to bow out. I mean, they competed in this game up, up until this fourth quarter towards the end where Fredericktown kind of just, you know, opened it up. But the Pirates, man, I mean, they, they fought for four quarters, you know, and th this game was close at the beginning of this fourth period. They certainly have battled from whistle to whistle. Just doesn't look like it's going to be enough here tonight on the road. And the ball was loose, at least momentarily. Fredericktown able to dive on it. So the Freddies just have to kneel on the football one time. And they are going to get out of here with the 16-point victory. And I'm diving into our Facebook comments real quick. Let's see what the people think about our player of the game. See, Sam would like to see uh, Trevor Bellman with a nice pick six. Tanner says Tegan Rowland. He's a Pirate fan. Janet says Tegan, of course. Aiden, vote for Tegan. Yeah, I think that's a pretty safe pick. So that's going to do it here, folks. After the last 25 seconds roll out, and Tegan Rule definitely going to be our Knox Community Hospital MVP. We'll bring him up here, have a conversation with the senior about his huge performance, over 200 yards rushing, four entries into the end zone as it's a mammoth win for Fredericktown on senior night. A lot to still come on our post-game action presented by Park National Bank, including that MVP interview. So 
Keep it here. It's live and free. And it's only on the OH Report. Be back in a minute. receiver coming from the Shelby Whippets, Isaiah Ramsey. He's caught our attention over here, and we're certainly going to keep an eye on the Willard Flashes. We will see you next week on the Stat Leaders Brock to uh, Spencer of the next year. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the diamond. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! <laughs> At the Kilbuck Savings Bank, you can expect great products and service from a fellow Knox County Chamber member. Now offering premier card processing solutions and services, ensuring the business owners understand their credit card processing fees. We have a wide selection of card processing solutions that provide lower fees, faster payment, additional security, exceptional marketing features, and help to improve your business operations and customer experience. At Knox Community Hospital, your primary care physician is more than someone who delivers your test results, more than someone who writes prescriptions, more than someone who listens to your heart. We are your healthcare partner who takes the time to know you, listen to your concerns, and provide you with expert personalized care to make and keep you well. Because to us, you're more than just numbers on a chart, you're a neighbor and a friend. Knox Community Hospital, in the community, for the community. What's up, America? Brian Skaronsky here. And if you want to see me and the gang chop it up with some unintelligent conversation, we've got the show for you. Check out the OH Report video podcast every Monday exclusively right here on the OH Report.
Fry, fly, Freddy's fly, I should say. They're ringing the bell here tonight, the victory bell here at home on senior night with a big victory over Cardington Lincoln, 44 to 20, your final score. Brian Skronsky along with Garrett G-Man Parlett. And man, you want to talk about like a, a rocking chair of a game here. Like it, this thing went back and forth for a while. It was staying at one end with a, a big lead built initially by Fredericktown, thought it was going to blow out City. All of a sudden, Carding to Lincoln gets back into the game. Huge play on the final play of the first half with Briggs catching the touchdown. They pull within 3G, but then the Freddies get it done. Monster fourth quarter led by their senior running back, Mr. Roll. Yeah, it was a dominating performance from Fredericktown in the fourth quarter. I mean, it was a, it was a roller coaster there, you know, Cardington was able to get back into the game at the end of that second half, or excuse me, at the end of that first half. You know, they had Briggs kind of on that Hail Mary play. They connected with him for a touchdown. And then in the, the second half, beginning of that fourth quarter, Denny had a touchdown. It was a one-score game. It was only 20-23. to 23. Fredericktown was on the ropes, didn't know what was going to happen to the Freddies, and then they responded. They got it to, you know, their best player in open space. He can roll, that is. Handed him the football. And he did the rest is, you know, they had to pick six two from Bellman. So a lot of factors here for Fredericktown, but a big win, you know, to, to keep their hopes alive and staying, you know, at least even keel in that playoff position. And they, they got a big one next week in the Freddie Berg and Cinderberg. Yeah, the Freddie's going to be going on the road for that one out to Cinderberg and one of the better rivalries, certainly within the K-Mac and that's going to be a fun one to keep an eye on. We'll have that action for you live and free on the OH Report. But Tegan Roll, a special night. We're going to be joined by him after he's done celebrating with some of his teammates and his fans out there. Just so many big plays for him, G. Starting off the night with a 16-yard tutty run, 73-yarder followed up after that. And then there was that string where they had three straight plays on offense and went for touchdowns. Kate Carpenter with a 67-yarder to the crib. So in that first quarter, the Fredericktown offense, they really did look unstoppable. If they can bottle that up and keep some of that heading on the road next week, I really do think they got a pretty big shot. Yeah, I mean, they got the skilled players to get it done. You know, we talk about a lot about Teague and Rule, but, you know, the QB, Ben Massey, he can get it done, you know, back there behind center in command, being in the general back there. And then, of course, Kate Carpenter, he's got elite size out there. You know, he's, he's a heck of a playmaker. But not only can he, you know, stretch the defense downfield and catch some passes, but he also can run in the jet sweep and he can get some handoffs. So they got a lot of skilled positions here at Fredericktown, and they look to go, you know, they got to go on the road to play Centerburg, but a hostile environment they're going to be going into. But you got to think, and you got to at least uh, have a, you know, something in the will for them to have a, at least a shot in that game against Centerburg. They did it last year, able to beat them. Let's see if they can do it again. Well, I certainly think that the 30-yard touchdown run by Briggs on the final play of the second quarter was the most exciting one that we saw tonight. This right here was definitely the backbreaker, G-Man. The interception by Bellman taking it back for the score because at the time, it was just a two-score game. It felt like there was a lot of momentum flowing in favor of the Pirates. Still nine minutes in the contest, and that one just a flat-out killer as it totally flipped the script. Yeah, according to Lincoln, it was only down 30-20 to 20 at that point. It had a chance to go down and respond and make it a one-score game once again, but not able to do so as Trevor Bellman put the stamp on things, put a bow on it as Fredericktown. Score looks a bit more you know, spread out than really what it should be. It was a tight game throughout as Carding to Lincoln gave it their all, tried to upset the Freddies here on senior night, but not able to do so as they walk out of here with a big 44-28 K-Mac win. And they got the band out on the field, putting on a post-game performance, having a good time. Always way more fun after a victory. Tough to go out there and play for the home fans when they're sulking a little bit after a loss. So none of that present here tonight. Huge performance all the way around by Fredericktown, who were huge in the first quarter, didn't do much in the middle of the game, and then big time in the fourth quarter when it mattered most. So they get it done here tonight. I think we got our guy, Brian. Oh, I think nice. he's finally making his way up. Let's see if I can get him on the cam for you. This was the catalyst. Number 19, Tegan Rule, making his way up here. He's going to have a chit chat with me. And he's coming with some haste, too. I, I like a, li a little giddy up in his step. So as Tegan 
is coming up here. We'll go ahead and get it dialed up for our post-game interview. No matter which side wins. So we are joined now by our Knox Community Hospital player of the game, Tegan Rule, ginormous performance on senior night. Tell me about the celebration just now when you, you get to ring the bell with, with all your boys. You know, it was a fun night, and you guys went off in that fourth quarter after things got tight. Uh, you know, it's great. Um, really, I mean, we just get to celebrate with the fellows, and we just have our tradition at the end to sing, and it's really great. It's a fun thing to do. So for you individually tonight, you got the party started. You had the two big touchdown runs in the first half and then a couple more at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. How much fun is it on a night where, you know, that there's a lot of hoopla but with the senior night thing, you got your parents out here, you're, you're taken away a little bit from the warm-up, and to have a big performance like you did got to be very satisfying. Oh, it's, it's great coming out and putting on a show in front of the home stands. It's great. Uh, senior night, do it all for the fellows, and they do it all for me. So I got to give out shout outs to my linemen. Yeah, and 14 seniors on this team collectively. What can you say about this group and just kind of what, what a tight knit little community you have out here with, with this class of 2023? Uh, we're all really close together. We, we don't hang out just at football. On the weekend, we'll all do like a group hangout. We'll go somewhere. Um, we'll hang out together and we'll have a blast. So I talked about you guys got off to the fast start. Then in the second and third quarters, Kind of allowed the Pirates to get back in it. Did things ever feel tight on the sideline after they made it a three-point game? Um, well, me personally, I just thought it was a 0-0 game. I mean, that's how I took it in my mind. It was a 0-0 game. Just got to put the best foot forward and continue to play good, hard football. So you do that. You get to 6-3 and three on the season with a win here tonight. Yep. But, now, but now the big one's next week, so you mm -hmm. can kind of put this one in the rear view moving forward. If you can put into words for me and describe to people at home what the rivalry between Centerburg and Fredericktown means out here in this part of the world. What is it? Oh, it feels uh, it's a great rivalry. Um, it's it's just a great game. We always put our best foot forward. Week 10, going against Centerburg, and it's just a 